Nigeria's inflation rate surged to a new high of 33.2% in March 2024, a 1.5% point increase from February. This marks a slower month-on-month -month rise compared to February, but a significant 11.16% increase year-on-year. -year. Food prices remain a major driver, reaching 40.01% inflation, driven by rising costs of staples like gari, yam, and millet. Urban areas were heat harder, with inflation reaching 35.18% year-on-year compared to 31.45% in rural areas. Core inflation, excluding volatile items like food and energy, also rose significantly, reaching 25.90% year-on-year in March. And to unpack this, I'm joined by Chief Economist, SPM Professionals, Paul Alaje. Good afternoon. Glad to have you join me. Mr. Alaje, could you please unmute? Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you so very much for having me. All right, fantastic. Now, many analysts predicted 32% inflation rates for March, but here we are, 33.2%. Did you see this coming? Uh, what was true for many of us who are economists and who are following up with the development was that inflation was going to increase at an increasing rate, uh, which means inflation uh, will be worse off than what we have it today. But to be specific, nobody saw 33.2%, which means for money you have last year, you would have lost one third, not because the money is missing your bank account, but in terms of what the money can buy, one third of the value would have clearly disappeared. So we didn't see, to answer your question uh, clearly, nobody saw up to that increase in prices. But unfortunately, it has happened. And um, I know many people will say, oh, but dollar has improved. Why do we see have inflation? Oh, the value of Naira to dollar is improving. Why is price is not adjusting? The truth about economics is that prices are sticky when it comes to reversing. But when it's progressing, it's sporadic. So we might not see the increase, we might not see the change in near term. It might take as much as six months to nine months before you start seeing major difference. Recall that when President Tinobu declared subsidy is gone, the impact was not immediate, even though we started seeing the impact on the petrol station uh, started coming immediately. But the overall effect took time. It took between, it took between four to six months before we started seeing it, you know, in other things. Unfortunately, Central Bank at that time also floated in the 15th of June. So we have two major impacts on pricing. Now we are seeing one of them relax, even though it's not up to where it was when President Tinubu got to office. Parallel market when President Tinubu got to office was around 800. Today, parallel market is around 1,000, 1,050 in most places. So food prices is a, is a clear uh, driver of this inflation. It hmm. continues to take the forefront of the inflation numbers at over 40%. What does this mean? It means that perhaps we are not having sufficient food or distribution of food has been hampered. Oh. The All solution right. is in the problem. Yeah, before go we go to okay. the solution, Mr. Alaji, just to chip in there, does this speak to the ineffectiveness of the CBS monetary policy stance or is that something else to blame for the sticky inflation? Well, I tell you that the CBN will eventually, uh, I cannot say the policy of CBN is not making any impact because if there is no curtailing money supply, things could be worse off. But do I also think that to continue to adjust um, NPR upward is the solution? The answer is in capital letter, no. I have won vehemently after the last 200 basis points to make it 600 basis points uh, increase within, four, within one month, that is within four weeks. If Central Bank makes another 400 basis points, then the Nigerian economy should be, read, should be preparing for a recession in the next three to four quarters if we continue to increase NPR, because it has implication. NPR increase without um, the overall economic performance, especially when growth is very volatile, will lead to a recession. In 2015, 2016, similar policy was made. In fact, it was at a time when NERA started improving under Godwin Emefiele. Unfortunately, shortly after that, the Nigerian economy went to a recession, not because local economy was prepared, but because there was global oil crisis. You have seen what is going on between um, Israel and um, uh, what's it called, uh, Iran. You've seen that 
Iran has launched over 300 missiles and ballistic uh, uh, equipment into Israel. If Israel retaliates, God forbid, if it extends to two, three, four more countries, what do you think will happen to the movement of goods around the sea? What will happen to Nigerian growth? Do you think we'll be able to, uh, to, to survive this in the reality of what is going on? Just last week, America, if, uh, the Fed, that Federal Reserve in America, hinted that it may further increase interest rates. If it does, foreign investors that Nigeria would have attracted would prefer to go back into such economy to invest their money. So why have I said all of this? The real solution to solving our problem is not going to come to short cut of just adjusting NPR. Our inflation problem is beyond money supply, even though money supply is a component, and economic theory. Economists will tell you it's just money supply. But as a realist, I mean, as a realist, and as someone who have studied beyond just the theories of economics, we have also studied applied economics as a course. In applied economics, you need to disaggregate the numbers coming from the National Bureau of Statistics. So what should that tell us? We need to do something about food supply. Our real challenge in Nigeria is the supply side. You have seen what is happening to dollar. Even though I've mentioned to your colleague that this solution is not its momentary, and this solution is going to be short term, maximum medium term. Mm -hmm. Emevelek tried it, it was medium term. Sanusi Lamino tried it, it was medium term. Sholudo tried it, it was medium term. There's none of them that was able to translate it to long term or permanent. You know why? Even during Sholudo supply of dollar, the benefit to now is supply of, of uh, the supply side of FX is really narrowed. So inflation, I believe, with the effect of this money supply, we reduce. But would that mean that we have solved the problem? The answer will be no. Let me the just come in there quickly, uh, we have Mr. Paul, Mr. Alaje. And that money supply, we throw many into hunger, we throw mm. many into out of job, we throw if, many into poverty. If I may, And Mr. I can Alaje. tell you, with the interest rate government is charging now, Yeah, it's just a, a moment, deal. Mr. Alaje. Apologies for butting in. You talked about a couple of things. You talked about aggregating the numbers and the need to shore up supply. If you could just break it down. When you say shore up supply, what in clear terms do you mean? Okay, so what it meant is everything that can help us improve our earning in FX. That will mean our productive capacity, our ability to secure our crude instead of almost half of, of those or one third of those being stolen within the Niger Delta region. We need to do something to secure that crude, those crude, the barriers of crude as we have them, we are selling them, and the money is getting directly to the central bank. That will solve some of the problems. Three, when FS come to Nigeria, can it go directly to the Central Bank of Nigeria? All of these, we improve supply that can monitor and all of this we go to our foreign reserve. Now, all of this will still not be the ability to produce, our ability to extortion, which is inflation, 40%, what is about 40% of, of the same is food inflation. So, so if you're able to change the structure of our agro system from this peasant farming or individual person whoever is interested we go farming so one that is a majorly private sector then we can because of garbage you mentioned what our output will be in part because of rights you mentioned what our output will be in maize because we need corn then we can now project and look at what the future will be we can also look at poultry because the price is increasing. How do we increase supply? When supply increases and demand remains the same, you can be guaranteed that prices will be fixed. That is what I expect those in authority to look at. Partnership, of course, with private sector. Expand supply side, then you are going to see the system stop. Unfortunately, or maybe I should say, fortunately, whichever suits anyone in the conversation is that our population growth rate seems to be steady at over 2%. So if you have over 2% population growth rate and you have your supply side or your productivity low, then how do you then say your economy will grow? It's really going to be very challenging and difficult. Well, thank you so much for your expertise on the news. Paul Alaje, Chief Economist, SPM Professionals. Thank you once again.